Welcome to this week's session, where we're looking at how AI is going to empower the healthcare sector. So I'll start with a question that I'd like to ask you. And that is your, about your preference. If you had the choice of seeing an amazing doctor um, that's really good at what they do, on their own, or to have the same amazing doctor accompanied by some amazing AI resource that has the latest knowledge about all medical practices around the world, has in their training data all of the e-medical literature and scans and reports and studies that have been done. Would you prefer to have one of them or would you like to have them both? I'm sure you'd say that it would be good to have both. And especially when we're not always dealing with the most amazing doctors. Sometimes we don't, we're not lucky enough to have the most amazing doctors around. However, with the AI, we can ensure that we have pretty good quality of AI. It's only getting better and better as we move forward but having both the doctor and the ai can really provide an amazing healthcare experience and soon i predict it would become illegal for the doctors not to use ai given how much ai is becoming much better than doctors at actually pinpointing certain aspects of you know the scans uh, being able to identify trends in data, uh, being able to pinpoint issues that could be wrong, that might be too small for a doctor to notice, or the doctor might be too busy to actually uh, take the time to really evaluate various intricacies of things coming in together. This is where AI can play a big role. And it's already in an amazing state and it's only going to get better and better. So this is why I predict very soon, probably in the next couple of years, that you wouldn't accept that your doctor will not use AI. And it might be in some jurisdictions illegal for them not to use AI to support their work. So today we're not going to necessarily talk about the medical aspects of using AI inside a hospital or healthcare a clinic, we're going to focus more on something that affects us all as patients. So we'll look at the patient experience and see where can AI help in improving that patient experience. And this can be applied across all kinds of aspects of the healthcare sector, whether the hospitals themselves or the clinics or doctors um, interacting or even medical uh, pharmaceutical companies um, medical websites, any one of these, you know, aspects of the healthcare sector can benefit from uh, this discussion. And we as patients, all of us as patients, can also start to see what's available to us. So let's walk through together this patient experience. And it usually starts with us having some questions. We might have, uh, you know, something that we've recently felt is weird, we're not used to, or uh, some pain somewhere, um, or something that has changed. And we just have some questions we'd like to ask you know, a doctor about these things that we're going through. However, not everything warrants a visit to a doctor. Um, sometimes some of us don't like to necessarily go and you know do that visit to the doctor unless it's something really serious but we do have a lot of these questions luckily now we also have the ability to ask these questions to a virtual real-time AI doctor um, this is one of our clients so everything I'm going to show you today is not something that's futuristic it's something that's being applied today by some of our clients so this is an example of one of the uh, use cases in one of our clients where they're using a virtual doctor to be the first level of interaction with patients to answer any questions that they have, guide them in terms of where they could go for more uh, 
you know, in-depth analysis if they need, if that's warranted, uh, if they need to do some lab tests, if they need to take an appointment with a doctor, etc. This virtual doctor will sort of give them that uh, direction and address some of the common issues where, like, uh, you know, if someone is facing a headache, what are the other things that they might be going through it? And if it's not, doesn't look like it's serious, the virtual doctor might tell them, look, I mean, wait until tomorrow. If you don't feel better, then probably, you know, go see a doctor. Um, but it looks like it's, uh, you know, it's not that serious based on this one symptom that you've given us. So it could address some of the lighter uh, aspects. And for things that could be, you know, warranted uh, or would require a visit or some extra lab test, this virtual doctor can actually guide the patient in terms of what to do next, which is, a lot, you know, a question on a lot of patients' minds. So let's assume the next thing to do is to take an appointment either for a lab test or for seeing a doctor. Today, what usually happens is that we call a receptionist somewhere. The receptionist is probably busy doing five other things uh, and they're taking down the notes or we call the doctor directly and the doctor is in you know, the middle of something. Or in some cases, there are apps where we would go into an app and actually try to find the right time, but the app could have many other things in there. So why not just call a virtual receptionist, AI, real-time, voice-based receptionist that has access to all of the calendars of the lab or the doctor, knows that what are the available slots, and finds the best slot that suits you. And after the call, sends you an email with a calendar invite for that appointment. This is again being done today, really efficient. Uh, it saves a lot of time on reception, you know, from the receptionist and from the patients themselves. And at the same time, provides a certain level of quality that you can't necessarily gain uh, when, you, when you're working with many different people, taking different shifts, etc. So let's say now we've taken the appointment for a lab test. We go and we do the lab test and we get the results. And I'm sure you've been faced with these lab results where you get all this for our not for the non-medical people in the you know over here. We get this gibberish of characters and words, but then we get uh, a number within a range, and if it's red or outside of that range, it's highlighted, we we pay attention to it. But we don't really understand what's meant with all of these um, you know, lab results. So wouldn't it be good to have a chatbot that actually comes with the lab results that you can discuss your lab results with? Well, that's exactly what some of our clients are doing right now. Um, you could either upload your lab results to the chatbot or you know, if, you're, if the uh, lab has this embedded, you get your report on WhatsApp with a link to actually discuss it with a chatbot. And this chatbot will basically ask you questions about your lifestyle, uh, if you're taking any medications, etc. So it also interprets the results in the context of what you're going through uh, today. So if there's some abnormal kind of metric, it might ask you, you know, did you have uh, something sweet to eat before you came to, you know, the night before? Um, and maybe that's affecting your results if you if your previous results didn't have you know an issue. Um, it will probe you to identify you know if your results are caused by something that's you know related to your lifestyle or behavior, um, or is it something that you should basically dig deeper in and maybe do follow up tests on or go see a doctor to uh, to make sure that this is being addressed. So this is a, a, a really uh, great, helpful tool to help us interpret all kinds of results. Um, you know, whether it's med blood works or you know scans. Um, this is where AI can play a really good role. So assuming we're, you know, we've we found in the lab results that we're vitamin D deficient, which I think most of us are, and we want to go and buy some, uh, you know, some supplements or some medication from somewhere. Again, you go to these uh, e-commerce sites, they've got lots of different products. Which one do you choose? Um, what are the best combinations for you? 
again, a chatbot could be really good for helping guide you in terms of the best products, uh, following up on your orders, all kinds of things related to the whole e-commerce experience. This is where chatbots become really helpful to navigate the thousands of products that are available to you on a typical online store. Now, you're taking your medications, um, you, you know, you get in touch with the doctor every now and then to follow up. But what if you have these burning questions and you'd like to just run something by your doctor every now and then, or you've left the doctor's office and then you suddenly remember, oh, I wish I had asked about this. And actually, the doctor talked about this thing that I didn't really understand that well. What if you could talk to the doctor's assistant, a virtual AI assistant that's trained on the doctor's methodology, their knowledge base, but also trained on general medicine and the you know, interactions between different uh, elements. What if you could talk to them anytime you have a question instead of bothering the doctor or not talking to the doctor because you don't want to bother them or the doctor not responding? This is an opportunity for you to ask any question, clarify whatever you want to clarify um, anytime, all the time. So these are some of the uh, elements where AI today is being used to enhance the patient experience. And when you see these agents in action, you can imagine that now the healthcare team in a typical organization can be just increased in the thousands um, by using these AI agents and with the same purpose of serving the patients in the community. And like I said, this is all available today. Um, of course, there are many, many other touch points within the whole patient journey inside the clinic or hospital, et cetera, that can also make use of these uh, either chatbots or voice bots or workflows, AI workflows. And I encourage you to give it a try. If you have a healthcare practice, try our one-click um, voice or a chatbot agent setup. Uh, if you talk to, you go to the site ai.potential.com slash Rachel, you talk to Rachel. Rachel is our AI agent that will guide you through uh, setting up your own voice bot. So within, you know, one click, as we say, you can generate your uh, demo voice bot trained on your website or on your practice and give it a try. It's really easy uh, to set up. It's very cost effective and you provide amazing service to your uh, patients and to your community at large. So with that, I invite you to reimagine healthcare for the age of AI, and let's make this a, um, you know, a much healthier world um, and make use of all of the resources we have at our fingertips now. That's it from my end. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. We'd all love to hear from you about any topics you'd like us to discuss in upcoming sessions, whether they are industry specific or business function specific, where AI can empower you or your organization or your community. Um, we'd love talking about this stuff. And uh, if you've got any suggestions, drop us a line in the comments, wherever you're listening to this, and we'll make sure that we'll, we'll cover them in the coming sessions. That's it from my end. Hope you have a great day ahead and look forward to talk soon again.